Hey Game of Her Own listeners, it is back. I'm talking about the Be Seen and Heard at Work group coaching experience. I'm talking about the program that will help you level up in your career. Women have joined this program because they have felt defeated, not being able to move their career to the next level. They have felt emotionally drained because they are stuck. They have felt frustrated because they are not seen and heard at work. They are done with not growing in their careers and refuse to continue to let it negatively impact their personal lives. In our group coaching program, you will build a strong executive presence. Learn how to advocate for yourself without feeling like you're bragging. Quiet the self-doubt that holds you back and be the change agent that uses their voice and speaks truth to power. If you want early access to this program, join the waiting list. It is that simple. Scroll down to the bottom of the show notes to where it says, join the be seen and heard waiting list. Click it. It takes legit less than 30 seconds to sign up. All right, friends, back to why you're really here. Welcome to the Game of Her Own podcast, a podcast about women who work in sports. I'm your host, Jahan Blake. After 15 years of working for three major league teams, including the Boston Red Sox, Los Angeles Dodgers, and the Chicago Cubs, I discovered the one thing I loved the most was helping women in sports shatter glass ceilings and take their seat at the table. I loved it so much that I made a business out of it. I have the honor of coaching high-performing women in the sports and entertainment industry and supporting them as they go after exactly what they want in their career. So if you are feeling tired of waiting on the sidelines, done being overlooked for promotions, and you're ready to pull ahead of the pack and take your career to the next level, girl, I'm here for it. I also created the Game of Her Own podcast to support you as well. We are here to share the stories of incredible women who work in sports and entertainment. These leaders and trailblazers will inspire you with their success and the lessons they've learned along the way to the top. Ladies, there is nothing like women empowering women. I am so honored you're here. All right, Game of Her Own listeners, you know by now that I love networking. If you're new here, guess what? I love networking. It's been something that I naturally do well. And then I started to realize all the benefits it had on my career. I also love helping my clients with it. We work on networking strategies and come up with a roadmap for them to execute on to help their career growth. Now, networking is typically a long game, but for those of you who are willing to play it, you will be better for it. I promise. Here are some examples. Next week's episode that comes out, it's with an executive from an NHL team. And she talks about how all of her jobs, all of them are a result of networking. If you listen to episode number 68 with Julie Donaldson, Senior Vice President of Media and Content for the Washington football team, we talk a lot about networking. She even shares the networking tricks that she learned early in her career and why they paid off. I'll link to that episode in the show notes. Now, if you listen to episode 35, I'll also link to that in the show notes. Amanda Shuta, she talks about how to master networking. And friends, she is so good at it. Not only does Amanda share fantastic tips, she also shares that all of her jobs are a result of networking. All of them. Y'all, networking works. If you are rolling your eyes right now or feeling some anxiety and getting a little nervous, I need you to trust me. Now, if you have trust issues or perhaps you're new here, I'm just going to ask you to take a leap of faith. In this episode, I'm going to talk about 10 ways to grow your network. Here's my recommendation. Pick a few that resonate with you and do them well. I mean, invest time and energy into them and simply crush it. Set a goal and check back monthly and evaluate yourself on how you're progressing to achieve that networking goal. Be honest with yourself what's working, what are you doing well, and where do you need to improve? Write down your goal and then do monthly check-ins. That'll help you keep it top of mind. If you need to, set up a calendar alert. That'll help you. Remember that you need to check in on the goal that you set for yourself. That'll help you keep yourself accountable. All right, friends, let's jump in. First one is an easy one, but it's one that often gets overlooked. Internal networking. Who inside your office do you want to connect with? Do you want to get to know your CEO or maybe someone in the C-suite? But 
it might feel a little intimidating to you, or you might just think they're too busy for you and they don't have time. You know what? They might be busy, but they have time. Go for it. I once had someone who worked for me. This is back in the day when I was a first time manager. One day I looked up from my desk and I saw him introduce himself to our COO and start talking and asking him questions just to get to know him right there in the middle of the office. Right. That's what we do. It's okay. I was so impressed. He was talking to someone who I've worked with for, I think at the time it was like two or three years and never said more to that COO than a quick hello as we pass each other in the hallway. This fabulous person on my team wanted to get to know our COO and stopped and just started talking to him. And let me add a little bit more context. My team member was at the time was a part-time employee. He wasn't always around in the office, but he had no shame or fear and he went for it. And I saw him do it a lot. Here's another thing. When you have a team member that's bothering other people in the office, people in the office let you know, right? They'll let people know. So if you feel like you're bothering somebody, don't worry. That person is going to tell your manager, but it's not going to happen when it's a simple, innocent networking, getting to know somebody. People want to get to know you. People want to help you with your career because they didn't get to where they are right now without some help. So who do you want to talk to in your organization? Who do you want to get to know? Are you thinking of somebody? Okay. Tomorrow, do it. Send the email. Ask them to grab coffee. If it has to be virtual, that's cool. If you're back in the office, go for the in-person meeting. Give yourself a deadline. Tell a friend so you can be held accountable. And don't let nerves or your busy schedule get in your way. Just go and have a conversation. Get to know somebody. The second way to grow your network is by attending a conference or summit. Okay, this is, again, you're like, okay, this isn't rocket science. This can be a virtual one. It could be in person. I personally prefer in person. I truly value connection, but I also prefer not to get COVID. So Things are a little tricky right now, but that doesn't mean you can't make connection and grow your network. Don't use COVID as an excuse, or we're going to turn around four years from now when we don't hear that word anymore, other than to tell horror stories, you're going to be upset that you weren't working on growing your network. If you hear a speaker at this conference and you loved their message and you want to connect with them, do it. Send them the email, or if you're at the conference and you're in person, go talk to them. You don't have to have the full-on networking meeting right there, but just go say hello and tell them that you really enjoyed what they were saying and that you're going to connect with them on LinkedIn and you hope you can stay in touch, right? That's easy. Then you walk away. Okay, I'm going to go do that. I connect on LinkedIn. I'm going to get in touch with this person and see if I can talk to them. Perhaps you sat next to somebody, you know, somebody in the industry, somebody outside of the industry, somebody you want to continue talking to. You want to continue that professional relationship. Make sure you follow up right after. Reach out to them. And you don't have to need anything. You can just chat. You can simply have a call and say, hey, I want to learn a little bit about what you do. Would you be open to a call? Keep it really simple, but make sure you reach out. If you're an introvert or you're shy, make sure you protect your energy the day before a conference or two days before, whatever you need. Make sure you protect it because personally, I'm an introvert and I know that big crowds, it's a lot for me. So I make sure the night before, the day before, I'm not doing something that's also going to take all of my mental and emotional energy. I try to make sure that when I go into a conference or a summit, especially if I'm speaking, I make sure my tank is on full. Like it is completely full. It's on F. I'm not worried about my energy being low. And when my energy is low and when I'm tired, I just, I don't have it in me to make those the small talk. I don't have it in me to like figure out who I want to talk to. I've learned the hard way. I've wasted some opportunities because I've been exhausted because I've been burnt out and I haven't gone to a conference or a summit in tip top shape, if you will. So if you are similar to me, an introvert, or you are shy, make sure to protect your energy. And then maybe the next day, don't schedule like an important meeting because then it's on your mind uh, the entire conference. Again, if you're an introvert like me, Make sure you follow up with everyone you meet and don't feel like you need to have a coffee or have a call with everyone you meet. Do that with the people you feel like you had a strong connection with. Number three, volunteer slash side hustle slash take on a job 
that you can do, maybe not a part-time job, but like a one-off job. Let me give you an example. While I was working for the Cubs, I was approached to work at Super Bowl for the first time. And it was actually the second time. It's the first time I couldn't do it. And the second time I was like, I'm in, I cannot wait. I got permission from my manager uh, in the organization to do it. And I am telling you right now, I didn't know what was going to become of it. I just knew it was a Super Bowl. I work in sports. Who does not want to be a part of the Super Bowl? But I knew that I love networking. I loved meeting people. I have made some great friends there. Fast forward, when I decided to start my own business, and I know that, you know, I said to myself, I was at Deloitte, I said, I can leave Deloitte when I get my first client. And the first project I had was a six month contract working on Super Bowl, again, just in a broader role than I had did and much more responsibility than I had the first time. Never saw that coming, but God, it really worked out. And it was all because of the networking, maintaining relationships, going and doing something fun and a little different and disappearing from the Cubs for a week to go work for Super Bowl. So what is it that you can do? What is it that works for you? Is it working on a big time event, a one-time event that might be coming to your city? Maybe you want to get involved in All-Star. Maybe you want to volunteer at a Super Bowl if it's going to be in your local area. Maybe you want to travel. I know some people who have told me, I traveled here to volunteer to be a insert name here at Super Bowl because they just wanted to be a part of it. And it was like a, you know, it wasn't a far drive for them. So think about what you can do where you can put yourself out there. If that sounds like something you're interested in, dig deep and go for it. Invest your time in it. You're going to be so grateful. I know that I was. If you listen to some past episodes, I, some people talk about how they volunteer to do media clips. This is back before <laughs> it was all electronic, but she just went and volunteered while she had a full-time job doing something else. Number four, join a board. If you have some free time and you want to give back and there's something special to you, a lot of times you, know, you should join that board or you should try to join that board. A lot of times, now I'm not on a board. I've always wanted to. I just haven't had the free time and to commit to doing it. But if you do, if you have that extra time, if you can cut back on perhaps let's just say Netflix. I'm just, I'm just taking a guess here. I don't know that you watch, you binge watch a lot of TV, but maybe, you know, you're like, oh, I can maybe watch, you know, an hour and a half less of Netflix <laughs> every week. Okay, great. Maybe you can fill your time with joining a board, giving back. And then on the board, you're going to meet some great people. I've introduced other people. Again, I love networking. I, I'm really grateful that I've been connected to some great people who are on boards and who are always like, oh, so-and-so is on my board. You should meet them. They would love what you do. Imagine being on the board and meeting all of these great people who are in that room, who are part of the board. It's just going to help your career. If you don't like networking or you get nervous, but you still like it, you're not going to like this one. Number five, reach out cold. This is going to help you. Now, I'm going to make it easy for you. All of my podcast episodes, we're almost at 100 at this point. Depending on when you're listening to it, I may have already hit 100. All of the podcast episodes where I have guests, I ask them how people can get in touch with them. So if you don't know that, that means you don't stick around to the very end, which is fine, which is fine. I know you're busy, but stick around to the end. And you can tell some people are like, I want to talk to all the people, email me. They'll give out their email address. People are like, I'd love to help, you know, reach out on LinkedIn. I get a lot of messages, make sure they reference this episode so I can kind of pull them to the front of the line. Those people are great. So you don't know them, you're reaching out cold, but at least you have the podcast to fall back on. If you're going to reach out to someone cold, one of the best things you can do when networking for career growth is reaching out to people who have the titles you want to eventually have. They can work in any industry. They can be people that you've never met before. The whole point of number five is reaching out cold. Just email them, send them a message on LinkedIn. Here's the deal. Keep it short and sweet. Keep all of the emails, especially when they're cold, short and sweet. If you need some help with how to reach out to someone cold, especially when it comes to being short and sweet, listen to episode number six. 
I mean, we're going way back here, but listen to episode number six. I talk about how to get somebody to say yes to you, to having a meeting that you've never met before. So I talk all about some tips and tricks and how to get that done. And in that episode, I actually give a template on reaching out as well. So take a listen to that episode. Number six, counterparts. You should know as many as your counterparts in your industry as you can. I have met some great, great people who I, my entire career, and we continue to help each other. That was not my intention when I first started networking, but that's where the conversation takes you when you do the same exact work just from different organizations. So reach out to your counterparts. I have a whole blog about different types of networking. I talk about counterparts. I talk about informational interviews. I'll link to that in the show notes. That'll help you as well. So when it comes to your counterparts, just reach out. When you have a job and you have an email address that has a brand that stands out, it helps when they see your email come through because they're like, oh, this person's not looking for a job. They just want to like share best practices. Ah, perfect. Yeah. I want to hear from what I want to hear what they're doing as well. So it, it's a win-win. And I'm telling you, when you have those calls, the people that you make a really good connection with, make sure that you continue that relationship. The people that you don't have a connection with and you're like, wow, that was a hard, hard call. I don't feel like they wanted to talk to me. Maybe you, you keep in touch through just some notes here and there, some emails, but the people you have a strong connection with, don't let that go. Make sure that you nurture, which leads me to number seven, nurturing your network. You want to deepen the relationships that you have. You want to deepen the existing relationships that you have. You want to follow up with folks. You want to track your conversations. So if you listen to Amanda Shuta's episode, she talks about how she has a spreadsheet. She's had the spreadsheet since college. She is in her, I believe, mid thirties. Hopefully she's not mad at me for saying that. She has that same spreadsheet and she just tracks conversations that she's had. She makes notes as to when to follow up. When I work with my clients, I encourage them to set up something that's automated, that's going to send them a reminder. That could be in your calendar. I always recommend Trello. It's a project management uh, system. It's online. It's web-based. You can track everything and it helps. You can set reminders. So when you set reminders, it just pops up and it tells you, this is the due date. You wanted to reach back out to this person. So it's great. So I always tell my clients, use this. You can use a calendar, but use this because you can track what you talked about. You can put it all into one place. It just lives there. And there's a free version of this as well. So number seven, nurture your network. Make sure you follow up with people. One of the easiest things to do is just be mindful of who's in like your top tier that you want to make sure that you're nurturing your relationships. Set a reminder. This is something my clients do. And I'll send out emails to my clients to remind them, but hey, this is today is opening day or tomorrow is opening day for MLB. Whoever you have in your network that you want to maintain that relationship, make sure you wish them happy opening day. Check when their team has their home game. Wish them happy opening day. Simple stuff like that. When you just want to say hi, but you don't want to send an email that just says, hey, thinking of you, because you know that might be taken the wrong way. So you can say, hey, happy opening day. I hope the season is blah, blah, blah. You know, insert, put your words there. Make sure you do, number seven, nurture your network. Number eight, ask for what you need. Ah, so now you've nurtured your network and you need something. It's easy. You just have to send the email and ask. Recently, I wanted to be a part of a summit and it was giving back to youth. And I thought, hmm, how can I do that? Ah, I know a super connector in my network. So I reached out to her. In the first two lines, two sentences, I, I know how busy she is because the first time we talked, it took us almost six months because the two of us had crazy schedules. So I know how busy she is. First two sentences, I made my ask. And then I, I did. And then I wanted to be like, I hope everything is well. I hope you like, I, I do care and I do hope she's doing well, but I also know she's busy. Since I care about her, I'm going to put the ask right up front. I asked her for some help in connecting. Does she have anybody that she knows? And she sent an email out 
like within 12 hours introducing me to somebody and everything is still progressing. So I can tell you the end result at a later date because I'm still working on it. I'm in the middle of it. However, I wanted to share that story because it was so easy. I have not talked to her well, probably in four, maybe four months. I think I've introduced her to some people that I thought she'd be great with. I've tried to nurture that relationship, but I asked for what I need. So friends, make sure, ask for what you need. Don't be shy. If someone cannot help you, they'll let you know. That's it. And you know, when they ask you for help, if you can, you will do the same. Number nine, listen. Be an active listener. Get curious. Ask lots and lots of questions when you're talking with anybody in your network. People, when you're having those first calls, they can be a little awkward, especially on Zoom when you're not sure like who's going to talk next, but you see each other, but you're just like, oh, there's... I don't have a next question. Like there's dead space. It's okay. Don't be the person who tries to fill up that space really quick. Okay. Well, this is great. Okay. Bye. Just like, it's okay for there to be some quiet time. See, there's quiet time. You're okay. Right. Hopefully you didn't press pause or like check your phone to make sure that gap was a mistake or your phone dying, but it's okay. I had some calls this week and I just embraced it. You know, some people, one person I had not talked to in 10 years, 10 years, reached out, wanted to reconnect, see how they were doing. I wanted to share what I was doing in my business. We had a great conversation. Yeah. There was a couple of moments where there was like a pause, but it gives you a second to like gather your thoughts. Like, oh, okay. We just talked about this. Okay. What else did I want to talk about? It's okay. And then make sure you're listening to everything they say. Make sure you ask questions. Don't get so caught up in the networking in the moment and be like, okay, I really want to ask this person for help and like jump right to it. It's okay to to talk to them and chit chat and really understand what's going on with them and with their business and what they're going through. Last one, number 10, take some action. You have to start somewhere. What do you want to do? This goes back to what I said in the very beginning when I opened, set some goals and hold yourself accountable. So all of this is great if in theory, yes, okay, this sounds good. I'm going to go, I have 10 ways now to grow my network. I'm going to do it. I'm finally going to do it. And then you forget about it. And then a month goes by. You have to take some action. You have to just start somewhere. If you have a great network and you really need to be better about nurturing, make that your priority for the next two months. If you have, you don't have a really good network and you need to start somewhere, pick one. Maybe for you, that's reaching out cold, number five, and just reaching out to people. Maybe it's reaching out to women in this podcast who I've had on as guests. What is it that you're going to do? How are you going to take action? Well, I loved talking to you about networking. I always love to hear from you. So if you want to network with me and you just want to chit chat and get to know each other, you know where to find me. Just in case you don't, you can find me on Instagram at Jahan Blake. You can find me on LinkedIn, also Jahan Blake. You can head to my website, uh, schedule a time for us to chat. And there is a, if you scroll to the bottom, it just says, let's connect and you can connect with me. So, and then it asks you what challenges you're having. Maybe you can just say, I just want to network. That's fine too. Putting this into practice might not come naturally to all of you, but that's okay. You just got to put in the work. I'm telling you this formerly shy, introverted, still introverted woman has been networking her entire career, probably before I started working. If I can do it and I can all, I can have all of these benefits, so can you. So if you're shy or you're busy or you're introverted, it's okay. If you want to grow your career through networking, you can do that. One thing I do is in my uh, group coaching program, the Be Seen and Heard at Work group coaching program that starts on March 15th. So if you want join, make sure you join the waiting list. So there's a limited amount of spots. So join the waiting list. So once it becomes the doors open and enrollment is open, you can be notified. So make sure you sign it up for that. It's in the show notes, just scroll down and you can click it. It takes two seconds. All I need is your name and your email address and that's it. But in this, the Be Seen and Heard group coaching program, we talk about networking for career growth. We set goals. We do a whole assessment to see where you are now and where you want to get to. It's important, my friends. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to give me some success stories, I want to hear them. Thank you for listening, my friends. Until next week.